Hello and welcome to Woman Vision TV. I'm your host, Nadia Giordana. I like to do a variety of fun and interesting things on the show. Much of the time that means I'll be interviewing one of the fascinating women that I've met in my travels. Women that are making a difference in the world around them or have changed their lives in some major important way. Then again, I might be in the kitchen cooking up something fun and delicious for you. And also, I'll be out and about on occasion showing you something that I find interesting and sharing it with you, thinking that you might like it too. Today I do have a guest, Debbie Johnson, who is an author and filmmaker. She's done a lot of interesting things uh, across the course of her career. And I won't spoil the story by telling you now. Let's go talk to her and hear it from her. Debbie, thank you for coming today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me, Nadia. Well, before we get started, I want to tell you a story about how I first heard of you. Mm -hmm. And it was back in the late 1980s. Your very, I don't know if it was your very first book, but uh, Think Yourself Thin had just become a nationwide bestseller, and everybody was talking about your book. I paid most attention at that time. You were a woman in sales, as I was a woman in sales mm -hmm. at that time. And your backstory, you had self published the book originally and then sold many thousands of copies, enough that it caught the attention of a major publisher who picked you up and then it went on to become a bestseller. Is that roughly That's the true. story? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and I vowed at that time, I want to meet this woman. It's been a lot of years and you and I finally met online a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. but today's the first time in person talking to yeah, each other. It is. I'm delighted so, to be here too. So, and to meet you, Nadia. <laughs> You're beautiful. Oh, thank you. You too. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. Uh, you have a couple of brand new cookbooks and the focus is on healthy eating. I'm interested in your, your food philosophy. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I'm... It's a little complicated for a lot of people, but we'll just say that in order to be healthier, I started eliminating certain things. Mm -hmm. And one of them was gluten. Well, I think first it was sugar, actually. First it was sugar, and then wheat, and then gluten, all of the gluten. And I yeah. found I was much more emotionally balanced. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think I was that far out of balance emotionally, <laughs> let's say, but I think I'm more balanced than most women emotionally mm -hmm. because of that. That's helped a lot. Uh, as well as other things, and then also eliminating uh, nightshades helped with, uh, on top of the gluten and the sugar, joint pain, menopausal um, challenges, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, it's helped a lot with that. As long as I don't get too stressed, yeah. you know, allow myself to get too stressed. Stress overrides so many things. It does, it overrides everything, but I get much less stressed than I would when I'm eating wrong. Sure. So yeah. when I eat right for me, I can't say wrong for everybody, but for yeah. me, I know what my body can handle. And so I'd say if you're a little more sensitive, if people are have food allergies, yeah. um, I've also eliminated uh, uh, cow dairy. I use goat milk, okay. cheese, and goat milk is completely yeah. different and much easier to digest for yeah. most people. Um, and I food combine. To, in order for the digestion to be better, because that would be one of my weaker areas. If I had one, would be digestion. So yeah. now it's much stronger, and I do, you know, still stick with that though, because it's easier for my body to get what it needs, and of course, stay younger. Because one of my books was "Think yeah. Yourself Young." Yeah, I haven't read that <laughs> one yet, but I will. Well, you're for doing sure. it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely be reading that one soon. Well, so what? prompted at this point in time, because you do a lot of different things, the publishing of, of two books at once, that's a lot of work. Well, actually, one book had been published a few years back. Okay. May I show this one? Yep, this absolutely. Is Please do. Fun it. with Gluten-Free oh, Low Glycemic okay. Food Cookbook. So that's a lot to wrap your mind around. It's <laughs> also allergy-friendly, so you have alternatives, you know, yeah. for what to switch with. Um, so that one came out a couple of years ago. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so what's your, what, show us this, this is a brand one. new one. 
and this is called, it's, it was a working type working book here you can see. It was called Desserts and Comfort Food for Everybody, and now we change it to Desserts and Comfort Food You Will Love. Oh, okay. And then we put gluten-free and low-glycemic at the top because people were a little confused about every which body. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, guess. I get so. that. Well, one of the things I personally liked about your cookbooks, I noticed that you give choices and suggestions for both meat eaters and vegetarians, and as you mentioned, and other vegans. things. Yeah. How has the response been from your followers? Well, I think they really like it because they can choose what they're going to eat at that time because, as you know, some people go back and forth from vegetarian or vegan to eating meat depending yeah. on how their health is, how they're feeling, what they feel their body needs, and what their doctor says. Because I know some people are vegetarian, the doctor says, you need to start eating some meat now mm -hmm. for your body type mm -hmm. because you're not healthy otherwise. And you know, so things change. And this cookbook will do it all. That, or these. <laughs> I like that idea. I switch during the week. I have a few vegetarian days and, that, and I incorporate oh, meat. So I kind of work it back and forth because I've always uh, paid attention to some of the health benefits of being a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian for a couple of years, but then I decided I can I can kind of eat everything. I just want to minimize the meat, and for me, that's been working. That works yeah. for me too. Mm -hmm. Well, so your goal is overall health, I would say, rather than just weight loss. But you've maintained a weight loss that. Uh, uh, how many years ago was it when you first lost some weight? Um, Gosh, it's been over 25 years now, yeah. and I've kept it off. Yeah, I lost the 40 pounds I gained yeah. dieting, and I've yeah. kept it off over 25 years. And this is the book in case. It's yeah, e -book that's now, the original also, book. The, the original booklet, and then this is the cover, very similar to Disney's publisher, Hyperion, when they published it, and then it's been out of print, so you can get a, a physical version of any of these books or e-books. That's the book that uh, uh, I first book. heard of you on. So now, in fact, while we're talking about that, if someone is watching, wants to learn more about you and find out some other projects that you're doing, you have a website. What's yes. that? DebbieJohnsonBooks.com. So that okay. makes it easy. Everyone knows Debbie Johnson, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'll put that on the screen to help us out. That's so we don't forget Thank it when you. we get towards the end. And yeah, I appreciate it. we have a few minutes to uh, talk before uh, we go today. I want to hear a little bit about your other projects. You've got some interesting Thank things you. that you're doing. Thank you, Nadia. Um, I'm really excited about these projects. This is a complete departure from what I've done because, you know, I've done more self-help and mm -hmm. uh, so it's been nonfiction. And this project, well, it's based on true stories, inspired by true stories, but they are fictional. Full feature length films. I'm fascinated. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the first one is Soul Survivors, Angels in Training, and these are all Soul Survivor films. So they're all about angels helping couples on earth with their relationships. So it's really specific. And I always loved the show Touched by an Angel. Did you ever watch that? Yes, I did. And I, in fact, I probably watched every episode when that was <laughs> on. I, I yeah. loved it. Yeah. Yeah, so this was going to be a TV show, the um, Soul Survivors, Angels in Training. I wanted it to be a TV show at mm -hmm. first, maybe a web series, but yep. I thought yep. that would have killed me to do one a week, even one a month. That would be so, hard. Yeah, so now I'm probably going to do one a year, and it'll be like Rocky 1, 2, 3, 4, but this is going to be Soul Survivors 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is Soul Survivors, Angels in Training. We won an International Inspirational Film Festival Award. I'm so excited. And Dove Foundation approval, family when was friendly. That, when was that was that? just October this okay. year, just last month. And we, um, and I was just so honored and so amazed. It was honorary mention, but for my first film, it was still it's international, and that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so we are doing a second one, Soul Survivors Dating Angels. And this one's about couples needing to remember how important it is to date, to go out on date night. To sure. get together with each other and reestablish that romance in their relationship. And this is a new full, and that's a new full feature, feature motion picture, too. It is. Oh, how great. Now, yeah. how did you get started even doing film? Film. <laughs> yes. It's a good question. I actually am, I follow my inner guidance, my inner mm -hmm. spiritual guidance. 
on everything that I do in my life. And that is what I feel has made me a success. Can you relate to that? Oh, absolutely. I thought absolutely. So. Any successful person, male or female, yeah. I believe, believes in something greater than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I certainly believe in God and believe that angels and mm -hmm. are guiding me, you know, that inner spiritual guidance, God is guiding me, and that I'm doing what I am supposed to be doing in my life. And it doesn't mean it's always been perfect. As you know, we also, anyone successful, has been up and down. We've oh, yeah. gone through all of it. But I think what separates the person who succeeds and the person that fails is the person who succeeds gets up more times than they fall down. Yeah. As Winston and we do fall down. down. Yes, <laughs> very much so. And I've been down. Sometimes I thought, okay, this is the bottom. There's only one way mm -hmm. to go, and that's up. And I hear God saying, you have to keep digging. <laughs> There's more <laughs> bottom here. There's some that yeah, and, more, and, and I, just, yet. I would laugh sometimes, and I would make it funny or fun. Yeah. And really, I just, I am amazed. It's miraculous that I could do this. I even wrote a miracles blog because there were so many miracles making these films. Mm -hmm. Anything I've done, but this has been absolutely incredible, and the yeah. angels are absolutely working with us on this. I, I feel in my heart. Oh, I think true. so too. You know, there's, there's. You can draw so much out of what you've learned over the years, mm -hmm. too, and, and the help that you get. So let's think about this. Now, you, so you started, you started in film, was that like four or five years ago? I started actually writing them about five years ago. Okay. I just started a year ago. I knew absolutely okay. nothing. I hired a producer and director to help me with just making the trailer, like a two-minute piece, yeah. and I watched, and I learned, yeah. and I watched movies, and I learned, yeah. and I listened to my inner guidance and that's actually what taught me how to do this yeah. and got me an award if you can yeah. believe that yeah yeah just so <laughs> you you wrote it first mm -hmm. you knew what you wanted it to be or at least as far as a TV show first and yes. then uh, transforming it into the the motion picture but you knew it was to be some kind of film production even before you knew how to go about Pulling it. it together yeah. and doing it. I just figured somebody else would do that part. I never <laughs> thought I would have to do it. So I ended up having to produce and direct and yeah. cast and yeah. do location management, find the locations, all of that, administrative, yeah. legal, you name it. And because I'm a business consultant too, a yeah. marketing consultant, yeah. I knew that piece and I also knew to have the script read by about 100 different women and to yeah. find out what they thought yeah. about it and people I did not know Yeah. and get their honest opinions. And I did, and they told me what they wanted, what they liked better, but mostly they loved it, and that gave me a lot of encouragement. And I knew women were just waiting for the next Angel yeah. show, and yeah. this is it. Well, and it helps to get other people's opinions. If you're writing a book, you know, it's all about, uh, well, it's partly about the story, but if for a written book, it's about the editing and the grammar and all of those things, and they're they're important in film too. Mm -hmm. But I think with film, the feedback on the storyline and how people react to that storyline <laughs> is even more important yeah. than in a print book. Is that true? Absolutely true. And that yeah. reminds me, I have to really thank and and honor my. Um, DP, my directors of photography mm -hmm. in both films, they were different people, and the actors who had also produced and done other things because they also trained me. Where did you and find your know, actors? Right here in Minnesota through okay. networking, calling theaters. Um, again, I'm a business consultant, so I thought, yeah. call the Chanhassen Dinner Theater. Yeah. Who do they know that they love? And that's yeah. how I got to Martha Lanay, who is a top recording artist in the UK. Yeah. Nobody knows her here, but she's famous in London. You know, she has a, a, the top of the charts yeah. with her music and she's doing tours in Europe. So, and I didn't know that when I hired her. She didn't even know it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, God sent me just the right people to help us move this forward in a big way. I think that is great. Well, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you want to be sure to come out in this, in this interview? I would say the only thing is... Um, Going back to the cookbooks, that mm -hmm. people love the way the food tastes yeah. that ate in my restaurant. And I actually had a restaurant that was gluten free and low glycemic. And after I closed the restaurant, people say, You should write a cookbook. Where was your restaurant? In Chanhassen. Oh, okay. <laughs> For a very short period of time because we really were underfunded. And yeah. it was one of those failures, yeah. you know, downhill that I had to go to go up. But now people are blessing me all over the world. Yeah. I would not have written this cookbook. And there is n there are no cookbooks in the world besides mine that are full-on 
gluten-free mm -hmm. and low glycemic. There's one that has 20 recipes in her book, you know, but mine is the whole books anybody can eat. You can make one dish for your entire family and everyone can eat it and will still love the taste of it. Oh, that is great. I'm, I'm, I haven't, you know, I've been in your cookbook and I've gone through many of the recipes and I've marked several that I wanted to cook. Mm -hmm. And, oh, uh, before we go, I wanted to mention we're getting close to being out of time for the por this portion of the show, mm -hmm. but we're not done. I was going through your cookbook and the first one that caught my eye was the, um, uh, Acorn squash stuffed, stuffed with, um, with, with, with stuffing and gravy. Mm -hmm. I made that recipe, and we also have video of how that came out for me, how I made it, and how that came out for me. So viewers, please stay tuned because I'm going to show you that next. Okay, as promised, I'm going to be making for you one of Debbie Johnson's recipes, acorn squash with stuffing and gravy. The first thing that I did here today was cut an acorn squash in half and clean it and pre-bake it. These are still hot. They're about three quarters cooked to, to my liking and tenderness. They're still semi-hard. But I did these in the microwave. You can bake them in the oven. I intend to make up this stuffing for you here today, stuff them, and finish them off in a 350 degree oven. So we'll get started with the stuffing and heat this up. Uh, Debbie likes to use ghee, which is clarified butter. This is a quarter of a cup. If, and she says in her recipes too, she has vegetarian versions. So uh, if you need to use uh, your favorite oil, like uh, grapeseed oil she has in here for vegetarians, she has vegetarian versions of many of her recipes, which I think is a nice thing. So we'll saute those onions. Put that over there. And of course we've got the onions, that was, a, that was a generous half cup of onions. This is a half cup of chopped celery. And we'll work with this for a minute. You need to get those sautéed just as if you're doing any stuffing until they're softened a little. All right, that's... This has been about 10 minutes, and I'll turn the heat down just a little. Add a, how much sage? A teaspoon of sage, and some nuts. Now she mentions pistachio nuts. I'm using pumpkin seeds. The bread cubes, she talks about uh, low gluten, low glycemic and gluten free bread crumbs. I don't have those restrictions in my diet, so I'm using some of my favorites. And we'll put those in here. I can hear my oven is up to temperature. You heard that beeping in the background. I'll mix these. Turn that off for a moment. Now, I can see here that maybe I need a couple of more breadcrumbs. I'm going to get those. I have a few more over here out of sight, but I'll grab those. And I think that's a, a preference, how many breadcrumbs you use in this. But I want to pile those high with the stuffing. So now in her recipe it starts with a, a cup of the breadcrumbs and I'm thinking I'm going to end up using about a cup and a half. So that's fine. That should be good. Now we'll get 
like that. Next, is there anything else that goes in here? Oh yes, a half of a teaspoon of salt. And let's see what she does. She mentions a quarter of a cup of purified water. So she melts the, the ghee, sautés. Forgive me for reading because uh, I want to get it right. This isn't my own recipe. And all right, so then she adds the purified water and simmers that in. That gives the croutons, I think, a little bit of moisture. take a look at what she does here next. Okay, that's mostly it. Then we're going to stuff these acorns and pop them into the oven. With the hot halves and the hot stuffing, it shouldn't take them too long to cook in the oven. All right, let's Move this out of the way, and stuffing going into the shells. This is going to be lovely. not mounted quite as high as I might like, but now that I see it, this is just about right for a, a good serving for a dinner. My husband and I will have this for dinner tonight, one of these for each of us, and it should be just right. I'll be back in just a moment. Let's get this into the oven and come back and make the gravy for it. Now, I have a pan that I think is going to be just about the right size to hold these upright in the oven. I lined it with foil and I will put these in and finish them off in the oven. 350 degrees. This may take 30 minutes, maybe 40. And we'll be back when that's finished. In the meantime, I will make up the gravy for you. Now let's make up the gravy that Debbie has for this recipe. It's a gluten-free gravy. For me, that's not much of an issue, but for other people, it is. Here are the ingredients. A cup of meat drippings or broth. I have beef broth here. And for vegetarians, it's nice that she has this version, uh, you can use Bragg's amino acids for vegans. Now you can also use, this is for the thickening in place of flour, one teaspoon of kuzu or arrowroot powder to thicken instead of using the flour. And I'm going to put a little bit of the broth in that to make sure it mixes, mixes up before we put it in there. This helps so that there won't be lumps in that. I think I'll get the fire on and the pan hot and we'll get that going. Here's the, the broth. There's a little bit of salt. She mentions Celtic or Himalayan salt. I'm using just a regular salt today. this up so that we'll have a nice gravy for the stuffing and acorn squash. This won't take very long. You 
don't want to cook this until it becomes clear. It'll start out cloudy and then of course that means that the arrowroot uh, or cornstarch for some of you people who want to use just what you have in your kitchen already will be cloudy in the beginning but when it's ready it turns clear. And I think then, once it gets clear here, you cook it another minute or two, and, and then, then you've got your gravy. That's done. Turn it off, and we'll show it to you. Now let's take a look at our finished gravy. You can make it thicker if you want, but this should be just exactly right for what we're looking for tonight. In a few minutes, the uh, acorn squash will be finished and we'll put the things together and I'll show you what we have. All right, here we go. This is the finished baked acorn squash with stuffing fresh out of the oven. It looks beautiful. And we'll be having this for dinner tonight. Right before I serve, that's when I'll pour the gravy over each of the halves of the acorn squash. I'm not going to do it right now because we'll be eating in about a half an hour. This will stay in the oven warm for that period of time and be ready to go as soon as we're ready. Thanks for watching.